you're using a Doppler shift of 8,000 hertz at, let's say, 60 degrees. What will be the Doppler shift if you change your angle from 60 degrees to 0 degrees? Your first option is 4,000 hertz, 16,000 hertz, 8,000 hertz, 6,000 hertz. The answer is B. We're going to go over this today. This is a big subject. We're going to talk about the Doppler shift. If you ever see a question that says, what's the Doppler shift if you change your angle, this is talking about your incination angle, from 60 to zero degrees. What you do is you will double whatever your initial Doppler shift is. If you change your angle from 60 to zero degrees, you will just simply double what your initial Doppler shift is. That means if you're using a 10,000 hertz or kilohertz Doppler shift at 60 degrees incination, and decide to change the angle to zero degrees, the Doppler shift will change to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. It doubles. When you go from 60 to zero, it doubles. When you change your angle of incination from 60 to 30 degrees, the Doppler shift will increase by 50% the original Doppler shift. That means if you're using a Doppler shift of 10,000 hertz at an angle of 60 degrees, and you want to change to 30 degrees, the Doppler shift will increase by 50% the original Doppler shift. 50% of 10,000 hertz is 5,000 hertz. What you do is you simply add 10,000 to 5,000 hertz and you'll get 15,000 hertz. So when you go from 60 to zero, you double. If you go from 60 to 30, you increase by half the original value of the Doppler shift. When you change your angle from zero to 60 degrees, the Doppler shift will be halved. When you change your angle of incination from zero to 60, the Doppler shift will be halved. It's the exact opposite of changing angle from 60 to zero. Because when you do this, 60 to zero, you double it. But when you go from zero to 60, you're gonna halve it. So if your Doppler shift is 10,000 hertz at zero degrees, your Doppler shift will change to 5,000 at 60 degrees. If you change your angle from zero to 30 degrees, the Doppler shift will decrease by 25% the original Doppler shift. This is where you have to kind of do a little math in your head. That means if your Doppler shift is 10,000 hertz at zero degrees, your Doppler shift will change to 7,500 at 30 degrees. And the quickest way to figure this out, if you want to figure out 25% of anything, I quickly will think of what's 50%. 50% of this is 5,000 hertz. Now I just need to decrease that 5,000 by another half to equal 25%. And half of 5,000 is 2,500. That means you're only going to minus 2,500 from 10,000 to get 7,500. If your Doppler shift is 8,000 hertz at 60 degrees, what will be the Doppler shift at 30 degrees? Correct answer is B. Anytime your angle of incination decreases, your Doppler shift will increase. And anytime your angle of incination increases, your Doppler shift will decrease. That'll kind of get you geared towards the right direction right off the bat when you read questions like this. If your Doppler shift is 8,000 hertz at zero degrees, what will be the Doppler shift at 30 degrees? The answer is D, because if you change your angle from zero to 30 degrees, you're going up. Your Doppler shift will be decreased by 25% the original value. The quickest way to do that is I divide whatever I have by half and then divide that by half and then use that number to subtract from the original number. So half of 8,000 is 4,000, then half of 4,000 is 2,000. That's what I want right there. Then I'm going to divide or I'm going to subtract 2,000 from 8,000 to get 6,000. If your Doppler shift is 8,000 hertz at zero degrees, what will be the Doppler shift at 60 degrees? What's the answer now? Yes, A is the correct answer. When you change your angle from zero to 60, you're going to have your original Doppler shift. Half of 8,000 is 4,000 and you just scored some points. If your Doppler shift is 8,000 hertz at zero degrees, what will be the Doppler shift at 90 degrees? The answer is zero hertz, good. Because at 90 degrees, you're not gonna have a Doppler shift whatsoever. Just looking at this diagram here of all these transducers, which one will have the greatest Doppler shift? When we look at this diagram here, and each one of these lines here represents an incination angle. You have 90 degrees, 80, 70, 60, 50, all the way down to zero. The best Doppler angle where you will get the highest Doppler shift 
is at zero degrees. Which waveform is taller? The first one's taller. Why is it taller? This waveform is taller than this one because this has a better angle at zero degrees, which means it has a higher Doppler shift. Zero is the best when compared to whatever this is. This is probably 60 degrees. When you get those questions like what I just gave you, and they decrease the angle or increase the angle, just think of this diagram. If they're asking what's the Doppler shift when the angle decreases, you automatically should think that the Doppler shift is going to go up. And then if your angle increases, you'll probably be able to rule out two options in your question. And if the angle increases, you know that the Doppler shift is going to go down because it's going away from the ideal angle. And then which angle will provide no Doppler shift? 90 degrees. Good. You'll probably have to know the cosine. The cosine of 90 is 0. The cosine of 0 degrees is 1. That's the ideal cosine. If they ask you which cosine is best for a Doppler shift, it's 1. The exact opposite of a 0 degree angle would be negative 180, which means your cosine would be negative 1. But 1 is still better than negative 1. Which transducer will have the greatest Doppler shift? A will have the greatest Doppler shift because this angle is closer to zero than any of these other transducer angles. D probably won't have any Doppler shift because it's closer to 90. This probably is around 60 and this is around 30. If this transducer changed from 60 to zero, what would be the Doppler shift at the new angle if the original Doppler shift was 10,000? This is 10,000 hertz. If the original Doppler shift is 10,000, at this transducer, what will be the resulting Doppler shift at this angle? The answer is 20,000 hertz, because when you go from 60 degrees to zero degrees, you're doubling your Doppler shift, because you're decreasing your angle. You're decreasing your angle, making your Doppler shift better. If my Doppler shift was 10,000 at zero degrees, and then I change it, I change my angle to 60 degrees, What's my new Doppler shift? This is 10,000. What's my new Doppler shift at this transducer angle? The Doppler shift is 5,000 at this angle, which is 60 degrees. Good. How are you going to make image A look like image B? You're going to increase your scale. What about here? How do you fix this image? You wouldn't fix your baseline first. That should be your last thing you fix. You're going to increase your PRF, which also increases your scale and your Nyquist limit. That way, your waveform will fit all the way on one side of the baseline. What's the next thing you need to do? Look at the baseline. To fix this, you would decrease your wall filter to bring in those low frequency Doppler shifts at the baseline. This is a good example of a special Doppler waveform that only needs to be fixed by adjusting the baseline because there's quite a bit of a gap between the peak velocity here and the bottom of the baseline. So when we go back to this one, if you look at this waveform, there's not much space here in between the wraparound peak and the baseline. But here, there's more distance to play with. If you have more distance to play with, probably all you need to do is adjust your baseline. So here you would just adjust your baseline, bring it down, and then that would be fixed. What about this one? How would you fix that one? So you would increase your PRF and scale to get your spectral waveform on one side and then you would decrease your gain because what artifact is being displayed here? This is called spectral broadening. Spectral broadening represents turbulent flow in diseased vessels. But if you look at this vessel, there's no disease there. It's just fine. So you would first increase your scale and then decrease your gain. Which arrow represents the wavelength? The arrow that represents a wavelength is the black arrow because the wavelength is anywhere from trough to trough or peak mm -hmm. to peak. This is a wavelength here. Which one represents the amplitude? The mm -hmm. yellow represents the amplitude. Mm -hmm. Which one represents the pulse duration? The pulse duration is the length of one pulse. This is one pulse. This is another pulse. That means that gray represents the pulse duration. Which arrow represents the period? 
the period of a waveform or a sound wave is equal to one cycle. So one cycle would be represented by the blue arrows. One cycle is where the sound wave crosses the baseline mm -hmm. twice. Which one represents the spatial pulse length? The gray arrows represent the spatial pulse length. Yeah, good. Spatial pulse length is equal to the pulse duration. The only difference is pulse duration mm -hmm. is time and spatial pulse length is a length. So if they ask you, what is the length of one pulse? You're not going to say pulse duration. You're going to say spatial pulse length. If they say, which represents the time of one pulse, you'll say pulse duration and not spatial pulse length. Which represents the medium amount of intensity? A represents the part of the beam that has medium amounts of intensities. Which one represents the lowest intensity? D represents the area where the intensities are the lowest. Which one represents the highest intensity? C represents the area where the intensity is the highest. Which one represents the highest SPTA? C. Yeah, the highest SPTA is where the highest intensity is located. Let's just say that this is a focus transducer. And you would think that if we are focusing in one area where the intensity is the highest, you would think that would cause more tissue heating, but it's only going to mm -hmm. affect one area of the body as opposed to an unfocused beam where you would get more area like this let's say this is an unfocused beam you're going to get more area exposed to thermal heating which one represents the pulse duration gray 